Good morning. We are in Bav Metzia at the very, very, very end of that Chesamud Aleph. Really, the Amud today is Chesamud Chesamud Beis. Sorry, and we are the end. Oh, sorry about that. But the end of Ches Amud Aleph. So we said in the Mishnah, the Mishnah's second to last case is what happens when we're not talking about holding a garment, we're talking about holding a behema. What do you mean by holding a behema? Either two people ride on the animal, on the donkey or the horse, on the camel, on the you name it, on the kangaroo, or you have one holding it, meaning one is leading it, you know, with like a rope, leash, and the other one is riding on it. So we say it's the same thing. They both have chazoko, and they bo- both are considered to be equal potential bailim. They take the shvua and they split the behema, which means we sell the behema, and we share, we divide between us the, the value. That's what the Mishnah said. Now we, one second, now we're going to actually discover whether today's topic will be horseback riding. Today we're going to learn how to uh, ride we're not going to learn how to ride on a horse, show and tell, although I think I could tell you that. But Lemaise, we're going to learn about Rechiva, about a person who's riding on a horse. Is that considered a Kenyan? Is that a way of, of some kind of Chazok or other Kenyan? Is that a way to acquire the animal or not? And even though the Mishnah seems to be saying that it is, it's not so simple. Bam, 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 bam. And yes, we do have a question already from yesterday. Baruch, what's your question? Straight from the peanut gallery. Meaning. Oish Naim Roichvin. Omar of Yosef, Omar Li of Yuda. Of Yosef quotes Rabbi Yuda, we're in Chesamut Beis. Rabbi Yuda was a very strong disciple of Shmuel. Says Rabbi Yuda, Shamis Mine de Mar Shmuel Tati. I heard from Mar Shmuel, from a master Shmuel, two statements, two things I heard regarding holding onto Behema one way or the other. Rochu Umanhi a person riding on an animal. And I also heard about a second case, potentially of what? Of a person that's leading an animal. Chad kani, v'chad loy kani. Yeah, in other words, we have to play, d- draw the lines over here. I've heard that one of them, either holding, either riding on the animal or pulling it with the leash is koine, v'chad loy kani. And I heard another statement. I don't remember which one's which. I'm sort of, you know, confused in my mind. Yeah. And one of them, I know, either riding on the animal, being mounted on the animal, or clapping, pulling it, yeah, by, by, the, by the leash in the, in the neck. One of them is not koine. One of them is not considered a Kenyan and does not acquire the animal. Yeah, the person who does it would not obtain the animal. Shmuel. This is a read according to Shmuel. The lawyer Dan, I don't know. I mean, are you? I don't know which one's which. I don't know which one's which. I know one of them, he told me he is koine, one of them not koine. I don't remember which one's which. Frag the Gemara, even when you have a doubt, the doubt has to be to a certain level. I'll ask you a question, people. You guys are already advanced enough. What do you think? What would you, uh, if you have to place your bets, <laughs> betting on horses here, yeah, the English people know about that. How about, what would you bet that? Pulling the animal is Kenyan or riding on the animal? Well, what seems to you more pulling? Pulling. Mashiacha. I'm surrounded by the elite Talmud Chachamim. We all know about Kenyan Mashiacha. Kenyan Mashiacha is mentioned before Shemishna in, in Kiddushi, in many places, but Vasa all over the world. And that leads us to the following question Hey, Chidami, what exactly is this story? What was it that Shmuel said that got reviewed the Kivyochel confused? If it's like I told you now, that there were two separate statements, yeah, regardless of each other, one of them is about mounted and one of them is about leading, then Manig, if so, if that was a question, Manig Lechudei, Manig alone, just the person who's leading the animal by the leash, Mi'i Kamande Omar, is there anybody in the world that would say, Loi Koni? Everybody here in the room knows that the Kenyan Meshicha is a before Shemishna. Yeah, you pull the animal and that does the trick. It's a, we say in American English, no brainer. It's a no brainer. Yeah, you're playing the game here of, you know, connect the lines. It's a no brainer that, of course, you know, London is the capital of Britain, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Of course, it's Meshicha is what is obviously Koine. And if so, by default, 
Rechiva would not be koine, because Rechiva we don't know about. By the way, at this moment, we think that Rechiva means when you just sit on the horse like you want to pose for a photo. You're not even leading the animal as you are mounted on it, as you're riding and you do the ta -ta -ta -ta. everything you need to do in order to make it move and you you uh, get you uh, you got it with your feet. No, you say, you sit there and we say sitting on animal. Hmm, okay, that's an interesting question. We've never heard about this one before. So if you want to tell me that you have a question about Meshicha versus the new guy called Rechiva, obviously Meshicha, every child knows is a Kenyan. And Rechiva is, well, I assume by default, not a Kenyan, yeah? So Mimela, right? Mimela what? Obviously, then it wouldn't be a question in mind of Rav Yudah. This is Rav Yudah. This is not Stam guy. If so, obviously, it must be the question of Rav Yudah was different. Must be the doubt of Rav Yudah was different to begin with. Ella must be what Rav Yudah did not remember from Shmuel is the following question. Is a higher level doubt. Sorry, no, I no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The, the following words belong to what I said before. No, sorry. The Gemara now says, therefore, by default, the Gemara just said now what I told you already before Balpe in English, yeah. By default, in our game of draw the, the lines, yeah, connect the dots, must be what? The one who's not koine is the one mounted, right? Okay, the Ikalameimar, right? Must be that's the one. Ella. Must be like this. The question is as follows. You have two people that both are doing a Kenyan together. They come to Beisdin. One of them, the two people at the same time. At the very same time, you have two people, Reuven the Roichev and Moshe the Moishech. <laughs> one of them mounted, one of them pulling. And that's how they come to Beisdin. And now we have a question who is the one? I'm sorry. Who is the one that is koine? Says Rashi, Shnei boim lefanenu. Zerach of the money. Each one says, Kula shali, kula shali. One second, please. One minute. My, here comes the question that Shmuel said something, and I don't know who's better, who's pref preferred in this case. I know, it, I know your question, but hold it, please. Roch of Odif. In other words, we assume right now that one of the two is koine and not the other. Wow. You hear what I'm saying here? The Gemara assumes that Shmuel now gave us this piece of information. If you have Rochuv and Manhig together, they come together and each one said, Kula Shali. The other one said, Kula Shali. I'm on top of the horse. And he says, I'm pulling. It's all mine. Each one says, Kula Shali, Kula Shali. On that, we have a question. What did Shmuel say in that case? Shmuel said that one of them is the winner. One of them is exclusive, only owner. The other one will say to him, go home. Why? My, what's the question of Shmuel? Rochuv odif deha tofis po. Rochuv is better because the Rochuv is actually tofis, which means it's holding on to the animal, says Toysfus, based on the Gemara later on, the person holding the uh, the person riding on the animal is actually catching on to something. Either he catches on to the like the reins, which really shouldn't fall your right, but on yeah, yeah, to the reins you are, Sarsh I'm talking nonsense. Yeah. He's either holding on to the reins or he's holding on to the how do you call the chuk chick in the top of the of the, the saddle? The main it's called, yeah. The piece of uh, the the front of the saddle. Main it's called? Okay. Not the main of the animal. Not the hair. No. Hold the main. No, that's wild. No, the saddle. The saddle has a chuk chick as a piece in the front. Uka for the top of the saddle. Yeah. I'll, I'll teach you writing another time. Now I'm teaching you more. Bikitza lom shane. Bikitza is holding onto something real. Yeah. In other words, the one holding the the the, the thingy, the the one riding, is holding on to the reins or holding on to the saddle top. Yeah. And because he's holding that, that is connected to another kinyan, which we'll see later on. Maybe the one riding, the fact he's holding physically into one of the leading items of the animal, which, by the way, is called later on kinyan mesira. That is something important. That's why he's better than the one who's what? Who's just pulling. Or Dilma, or maybe Manig Odif, the Oslo Michamose. Maybe the Manig, the one leading it, is better because the animal is walking because of it. Now, the, the one riding doesn't know how to ride. You ever you took your kid to ride on a pony? Yeah, right. So the kid sits there on a the pony, usually scared stiff, you know, depends on the age. 
And the guy, you know, you pay him 10, 20 shekels to take him to the Middle East, yeah? So that's what's going on over here. There's one guy who's a passive rider. He's holding on to it, you know, showing as if he's the owner because he's holding on to a very central piece. And the other one is actually pulling it. And that's the question. That's the, Now we just found out what the question is. When you have two people, one sitting on top of the animal, and I want to add something. Toysa says, based on another piece of mercy later, that we're not talking about a guy who's completely, completely passive, the one sitting down. The animal moves a little bit because of him. The animal mo senses that somebody is on top, yeah? So it moves a bit, gets a bit jittery, moves a little bit, but not significantly. He's not mamish causing it to walk, you know, to a certain direction. Some the animal starts getting a bit shigana, yeah? Well, the other one is really leading it. So again, back to the question. The question is as follows. One sitting and one leading. Is the one sitting and holding on to the reins shows that he's the owner. More than the one pulling. More than one pulling. The one pulling is time pulling uh, like with a rope. Or do we say no? Or do we say that? Or do we say that the one pulling is more choshuv because he's really schlepping it? That's a question. The question which I think you want to ask. I'm again being... Uh, Telepathy here. What what is Shmuel? What, what's Shmuel talking about? Shmuel's in a Myro, right? Shmuel's question seems to be against who? Against the Mishnah. Shmuel says, "Well, who's the winner in the case of one sitting and one pulling? Right? Who's who's the winner? Is it the one on top who's on top or holding, or is it the one who's actually moving the animal?" But what did the Mishnah say? The Mishnah already gave you the answer. 50-50. The Mishnah seems to be saying that both hold the same level of chazoko. Same level of muhzokut, all the lomdas you want to say, the same level of Kenyan, and the yeah, on okay, thank you. <laughs> then I get a okay. And then the question is, and then the question is in the Mishnah, they're both equal. And yet Shmuel seems to be ignoring the Mishnah. Shmuel seems to be saying what? That really it's either or. And we don't know which one Shmuel said is the winner. So that question will be addressed later. Okay? But for now, let's ignore the Mishnah for you know five, ten minutes. And then we will continue. And I get here a note in English from someone, I don't know who, either Matis or uh, Tzvi. Part of the saddle that the rider holds is called the horn. Okay, next time I go horseback riding, I will tell everybody that I'm holding the horn, although usually I don't. I usually hold the reins. Thank you. Hey, oops, I don't remember which one's first, but people don't really mind. Yeah, yeah, it's the both, both is first. We're going to stop the recording. Yeah. I just want to point that Shmuel obviously believes Mashiach is a good Kenyan. Shmuel now is suggesting that maybe Rechiva is even better. Yeah? Okay? And now, potentially. That's a question. Yes. Right now we don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe Rechiva not only is a Kenyan, maybe sitting on the horse and holding the horn or whatever that is or holding the, the reins is a Kenyan. Not only it's a Kenyan, it surpasses Mashiach. If there's one guy who's Moishech, no competition. It's a Kenyan. If the guy is riding and the other one is Moishech, yeah, ever played cards? He has, I don't know, he has a king and he has a joker. A king is a good card, but a joker even more. Yeah, that's one. Riding, may, maybe, maybe. We don't know who's stronger than who. It's a war between Kenyanim, as happens all over Shas. Okay, that's the question. i am be happy to hear more questions. I don't know who's who, you know. So now we're trying, we're now attempting to answer the question, who, who's who, which Kenyan is better according to Shmuel, Reichev or Manig? Omar of Yosef, Omar Li of Yudah. Rav Yosef says, Rav Yudah himself, again, yeah, Rav Yudah is the one who's in doubt regarding what Shmuel, his master, said. Says Rav Yosef, you know, Rav Yudah himself gave me, you know, the begin, the sort of the, the not a hint, the direction yeah, to try and find out which Kenyan is better according to Shmuel. Nechze Anan, let's see for ourselves. I don't remember what Shmuel said. Let's play detective work. Let's try and figure out ourselves which Kenyan according to Shmuel is better. Detnan, look at the Mishnah at the end of Kilaim. And this Mishnah refers to different kind of writing. And that is, you know, that there's an Isra Medoraisa to Bimani Losachosh Beshor Bechamor Yachdo. You're not allowed to plow or otherwise ride. With a don with a shal and a chamo, donkey and a, and the and the bull, the very kind of different animals. They don't, they're not a good team together. It's not good teamwork. To be tzar all kinds of vinyan be kabbalah. What? It's a form of kilaim. It's a form. It's not. Yeah. It's a form. It's in masechta kilaim. It's not real kilaim. You're not making them having a baby together. 
not mixing them, it's suk of kilaim. It's true. It's also called kilaim, I think. The Maisa, they say the idea is Tarba El Chaim. You're not allowed to ride and lead together. Lead, listen to the word. You're not allowed to lead and cause them to walk together as they plow along or carry a, a carriage. If it's a show and chamo, one is slow, one is fast. You're Metzayar, both of them. You know, like you have a bed chavrusa. You know, it's 10 levels above you or 10 levels below you. It's a very frustrating thing, right? It is more or less the same, a bit above a bit. But if it's very, very low and you're looking for a chavrusa, not for a student, or you're looking not for a Rebbe, yeah, it's very frustrating, very different levels. So that's why, don't do that. Now, it says in the Mishnah, the one who's the manig, the one who leads them, manig is the one who leads with the what? With like a leash, with a rope. He leads the shore and Chamor together. In nice crisp English, he chaps. <laughs> he gets the 40 Malchus, he gets 39 Malchus, which means the real Avera, the real sin of leading animals and making them plow together is the one who leads them by the leash. He takes one leash or two leashes together and he schleps the shore and chamor together. He is the one who's Sofik is Arboim. The Yoshev Bakoroin, also Sofik is Arboim. Now there's a person who's Yoshev Bakoroin. The Yoshev Bakoroin is the person who sits in a carriage or he sits in, you know, like some, I think women in certain societies have it. They have, he has like, like a cabin who's on the animal which means he's sitting on the animal or right behind the animal, but he's not holding the, the horn yeah, or the, or the reins. He's sitting there like a king. He sits in a carriage in a chariot yeah, behind or on top of the animal. He too, chaps darboim. Both of them chap darboim. And that's very similar to us, right? In other words, one leading and one sitting. One sitting pretty, the other one leading. Both of them are eventually will chap 39 lashes, bad boy. Why? Which means... Halachically, we view both of them as ones who cause the animal to move. Even the one who's sitting, as I said before, prepared you, is not completely passive. Because of his weight, the animal does move around, does sort of something. That's Tanakama. You have to listen to the end. No questions for the next two and a half minutes. Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Meir argues on Tanakama over there. Meir says, no, sitting passively, and the animal just moves a little bit, nah, that's not called, that, I don't call that real cause for movement. You don't really do anything to the animal. You're not really affecting the animal in any way. It's a nice photo for Ben Azmanim, so-and-so sitting in a nice caron on the animal, but you're not really doing anything substantial. Now look at the Ma'apecha. Here comes the revolution. Now you tell me, guys, people, if Tanakama says that sitting in the caron is something and Rabbi Meir says it's nothing, halacha is like who? Yochid v'rabim, no, no, sorry. Yochid v'rabim, alochi k'rabim. Yeah, majority rules. Even Westerners know that, right? Alochi k'rabim. Look what happens. We're trying to find out what Shmuel's opinion. Don't forget a detective work, right? What's the opinion of Shmuel in the matter of Roichi v'manig? Here comes the crescendo. Umi de'apich Shmuel. Shmuel came along and he turned around the opinions. Shmuel had a version in the Mishnah strongly so, and he said, v'tani, the Chachamim poetry of Yosef Bakaron. Shmuel said, "No way! You know who are the ones who say that the one sitting passively or almost passively on top of the animal is Batu? It's Chachamim, not Rabbi Meir. Why did Shmuel do that? Because Shmuel wanted the winning team, which is the majority, which is Chachamim, the Roy, which is Halacha. He wanted them to be saying that the one Potter is the one sitting passively. Shmami, no. Here we come to." Almost the answer. Shmamina. From here I can derive. Rochuv lechude loy kani. Rochuv alone is not koina. Again, Shmuel sort of, I wouldn't say twist around because Amaroim, they knew how to learn the Mishnahites, of course. Shmuel is the one who learned the Mishnah over there. That the opinion of the majority is the one who holds that sitting on the Quran passively, almost passively, without really pulling it, without really causing it physically to move in a direction, that is not koine. Ah. At all, why not coin it? Just like by leading the short chamor, you sitting there, you're not part of the story. Even if the animals move, it's not because of you. You're not considered to be. You stand mounted there like a doll, like like a, like a china doll. Nothing. So mimele by Kenyan, it's not called you coin The koshik and rochubim komanig. Look what we did here. Not only when it's in competition, rochu versus manig, even rochu alone. Even if a person sits there, look at that, the person jumps on the animal, 
You know what, Alan? You can even settle it. Oh, here's your answer. A person knows how to ride, do you think so? And what? He settles the animal, puts everything, all the many things over there, and then he sits on it. Ah, that's a nice photo. And then he says, you know, uh, darling, it's not just a nice Ben Asmani photo. It's also my animal. Says Shmuel, no, no sorry. sorry. Sorry, Mike. No, it's not considered to be a Kenyan. Why? Because we see by Kilaim, as you call it, by Kilaim, we see that the one sitting on the animal in a caron, in a chariot or some kind of box on top of it, is not called relating to the animal. The fact that even if they move around in the plow, nothing. So to for Kenyan, not only it's less than money, it's nothing. It's not the king card. It's a zero card. It's a disqualified card. It's nothing at all. This is what we want to say as of now. Yeah, this is what we want to say now. As of now, we're going to reject it soon. But right now we say that according to Shmuel, the Rochov is not considered to be a Kenyan. A person sitting there passively is not, or almost passively, is not a Kenyan. Right? And good. Now we have the answer. Now we have the answer. Shmuel made two statements. One of them is that Manig is koine. Oh, what a relief. Manig is koine. That's Mashiach, which everybody here said. And the other one sits down. He's not koine. If life would have been simple, we would stay with this. And that's a nice answer. Okay? Okay. Omar la Baye. You go first. Yeah. <laughs> Line starts with a baye, but I'm hearing your question first. Yeah, you can ask now. Okay. Okay. Omar la baye of Yosef. So that was Rav Yosef's attempt for a solution. Yeah. Quoting who? Quoting Rav Yuda. Omar la baye of Yosef. A baye used to challenge his rabbi Rav Yosef many times. Says about Rav Yosef. Many times, many times, many times you told us, let us see, let us investigate into the case, including this case of Shmuel. You didn't say that, you didn't quote Rav Yudah, you said it yourself. You're right, it's true that many times I'm the one who tried to investigate into the case without Rav Yudah. I also remember, now that you picked my memory, I also remember the Amri Lay. I remember who says of Yosef, I challenged Rav Yuda and I said, Your comparison is not good. Ah, they're not the same. You want to compare a person mounted on the actual horse from who? From the person who sits in that caron, in that box, or in that chariot behind the animal. That is not the same. They're not comparable. Not a good comparison. Why? Yoshev loitof is bemoseiro. The one who sits in the karon, he sits so passively, he's not holding into the reins, not in the horn, and not in the mane, and not in nothing. He's not holding into anything. He sits there with his arms crossed like that. That's it. That's what he's doing. And he's not holding onto the moseiro. Moseiro is like, moseiro well, could be one more than one thing. Either it's the reins or it's the muzzle. Moseiro is something essential that it's normal to hold the animal with that item. That person who sits is not holding the Moseira. That's why it's not considered Kenyan. But Rochuv, tough is the Moseira. The person we're talking about since the beginning of the Sugya is Mr. Ryder, who rides. He may be sitting and not walking, but he's holding on to the horn, or he's holding on to the reins. He's holding on to something real. So what? And Mimela, right? Mimela, I would say the fact he holds the important item, that alone is a Kenyan. That is reason to be koine. You're proving from a guy who sits like a monkey, stam sitting there without what? Without even holding onto anything. He holds it into his camera, nothing. Of course he's not koine, or at least Lefi Shmuel is not koine. But our guy over here is a rider who may be fancy, but he's holding. Maybe the fact that he's holding onto something essential is a Kenyan, as we're going to see soon, called Kenyan Mesira. And therefore, that's why he's koine. Right? So you still didn't prove your point. We're still back to square one. Maybe Shmuel that said that sitting completely passive is not koine, but sitting and holding may yes be koine. So we're still in question. And then he answered back. Rav Yudah had what to say. And this is very important. Now, now we're going deeper into the world of Kinyonim. And he told me the following. Rav Shmuel Damitavayu. He quoted both Rav and Shmuel both to be saying Moseira loy. Kani, which means as follows. Moseira or Mesira Loikani. 
So let me introduce to you now, although I know you know it already from Baba Basra, but there was a good Chazorah, there's a Kenyan called Kenyan Mesira. What's Kenyan Mesira? We all know about Kenyan Meshicha. Meshicha has a cousin who is very different to it called Mesira. Both in English, Meshicha is to pull. Mesira means like to give over. And actually it's a good translation to give over. The story is as follows. The story is as follows. Now, Meshicha is a Kenyan, which means Meshicha is you pull it, Either you pull it a, a little bit so the legs move, or you pull the entire length of the animal. You have to pull it a significant amount of distance towards you. I'm pulling it towards me. That Kenyan called Meshicha, yeah, you need to hear that little lecture here, and it's important. Meshicha, the, the philosophy behind Meshicha means I bring it to my domain. Where's my domain? Even in the middle of the street. If you remember from Abbasra, I'm a Berch, yeah. Meshicha works even in the middle of the busy street. Yeah, in the middle of Manhattan, the busiest, you know, area I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And you want to be calling a donkey in the middle of Manhattan. I think any anything goes there, no? Even Kenyan of donkey could work in Manhattan, right? You're calling a, yeah, I don't know, an elephant, you whatever you want to be calling. Okay. <laughs> and what? And you pull it towards you. It's calling a, why? My area, yeah. No, I'm sorry, I'm talking nonsense. Meshicha is not calling in the street. Oy, oh, boy, what a terrible mistake. The sheikh has not coined Rishus Rabbi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please erase what I said. Please erase what I said. No, no, no. No, no, no. Again, I'm sorry. Meshicha is a Kenyan that shows it's going into my domain and not to anybody else's domain. Now, in the busy street, Rishus Rabbi, we don't know who's, who's, who's walking where. Everyone's domain is very, very confused together. That's why it doesn't work over there. Meshicha means I'm pulling into my area. Meshicha works in a Simta. Simta is a quiet street where people sometimes stay alone and they have their own kilo private, you know, private time. So their Meshicha works. That's Meshicha. Okay? Now, Meshicha works even from Hefker. I want to be Moshech, something that was owned by nobody, like a Metzia or Nichse Ha. Ooh, starts with a Gimel. Yeah, very good. Which is Hefker. I can be Moshech. Why? The fact I'm pulling it into my direction, into my house, into a Simta, into a Chotzer Meshutefes, that's my Mesira is the naughty cousin of Meshicha. Mesira is completely different. Mesira means, in today's terms, by the way, I'll tell you later what it means today. Mesira means a person whose toifus is holding physically into an essential piece of the animal, for example, animal, that shows ownership. If I hold onto the bell, let's say a cow has a bell, right? Many times, like these pictures from Switzerland, yeah? If I hold onto the bell, that shows ownership. The fact I'm holding, like we say in English, you hold the helm. You have the helm in your hands, right? If I hold the bell, if I hold the, the reins, if I hold the horn, if I hold even the mane of the animal, yeah, those things show me that really it's considered to be mine. I'm holding like I'm holding the scepter like a king. That works even in Roshul Sarabim. Yeah, why? Because it's not about moving into my Roshul. It's not about physical movement. I'm moving it from X to no, I'm moving. I'm not moving anything. I'm showing I'm the owner. Like, I think Masira today, I may be wrong, but I'm sort of 80% sure if you check it. Today, if you want to buy a car, halachically, I think once you hold into the keys of the car, it's called Kenyan Masira. I'm pretty sure. Either you drive it and you do Kenyan uh, Mashicha, driving, you cause it to move, you know, uh, two meters or so, or, or the length of the car. If you want to buy a semi-trailer, that's a long time. Or, or what? Or if you want to do Kenyan and Mesira, you hold the keys. You stand outside the car. Holding the keys is like holding the helm. That shows them with the boss. Mesira, though, what does Mesira mean? Given over. Oh, now we come to the main point. As opposed to Mesira, Mesira cannot work if I'm working with Hefker or with Nichseager or anything like that. Why? Mesira means what? Did I say the word in English? That's giving over. Summer. Very good. Mesira means the previous owner is giving me over the item, showing that it's like a relay. Yeah, in other words, he's a, he's like passing on the powerful item that symbolizes power into my hands. If the previous owner of the whatever of the BMW gave me the keys and now they're in my hand, that is called Mesira. Therefore, oy 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 oy, Mesira in our page just not going to work because we're talking here about people who found it in the street. So they claim. We are talking about the mission. The factual is a problem with the mission, leave it aside. But the case is the same case. We're talking about two people who claim that it's found. Each one says he found it first. We don't know who is the real guy. Now, to say that it's Mesire, it's not going to work. 
Mesira means that someone was moiser it to you, gave it over to you. And if you just found it in the street, Hefker is not somebody, I don't think there was any ghost in the area who gave it to, who gave you the, the, the helm, right? Or, or, the, or, or the, the saddle. Me main the Mesira here is the fact that the rider holds on to something is not an advantage. And therefore, we were right. We were right in the comparison. And again, let's review. If Shmuel says that a person sitting in a karon, you know, like some very hosh of a gentleman, he sits in a karon without holding the, the reins, is exactly the same like the guy who is holding the reins. Why? Because holding into something in a behem of hefker just doesn't add anything, doesn't do anything. Because Mesira means limsor, to give over. What's Mesoret? What's Mesorti? Traditional, given over from one to the other. It was Nimsa from Moshe Rabbeinu till here. There's no Mesira here. And Mimela, the fact is holding on to the, in, onto the horn, onto the saddle, onto the Mosera, is a, nice, is a nice photo, nothing more than that. And if sitting alone doesn't work, then sitting plus holding won't add, what, won't add anything. And if Shmuel believes that sitting is not good like Bekilaim, Therefore, sitting with or without holding ain't doing anything. And really, that's a maskonah. And that's really what Shmuel thinks. Shmuel thinks that sitting passively on the animal just doesn't do it. So who's the koina? The one Moshe, the one pulling. What are we going to do with our Mishnah? I promise you, I'll tell you. Before that, before that, sorry, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, holding, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. And that is the Ritva in Kiddushin. Something here didn't sit right with me. And Baruch Hashem, I have whatever. Whenever I see something in the Ritva, I see that... Uh, as a mechaven, the Ritva and Kiddushin Daf around there, Chavov says, and I want to, I'm not correcting myself because what I said is, is such a shita. Some people say Mesira means physical handing over. Yeah, if this tea bag shows I'm the owner, there has to be physical giving over from Reuven, previous owner, into Shimon, the new owner. Others showing him, including the Ritva, say that even if I hold it without him handing over, let's say the car keys, the car keys were on the table and I picked them up. Uh, it works without him giving it over, but he has to be present. He has to be present and show that he's yeah, he's content, he's happy, he's masking that I'm the new owner and I'm the one holding the powerful symbolic item and not him. But there has to be somebody else in the picture. That everyone agrees. Yeah, if this is complete hefker, I take a horse running around in hefker and somebody was masking it. I know there's a horse in the kibbutz running around hefker and everybody knows that and I'm holding the, the rein. Doesn't do anything. The kol alma. And Mimela, back to what we said in the Gemara. Yes. Question. Yeah. Vaiter. Okay. Omela by the Rabbi Yosef. What? Country lane. Okay, that's a simple. Very good. Okay. Okay. Ikadami, some say, some say on the similar venue, the same con similar conversation. Omel Abai Lerav Yosef. Abai is now challenging Rav Yosef himself. Abai is the one who asked the question, not Rav Yosef. Same question. Hey, mar, How do you compare? Are trying to figure out the loch of Rochuv from Yosef? Yosef, the one sitting, meaning without holding anything, he sits there like a king without touching anything in, the, in this box kind of thing, Koroin. Lotov is Bemasera. He's not holding the Mosera. Yeah, he's not holding into anything. Rachov Tov is Bemasera. The Rachov is yes holding the Mosera. So maybe holding the Mosera is what does the trick. That's called Mesira, and that's a Kenyan. And therefore, the one Rachov with the Mesira would work. Omalei, Hachitana, Idi. So he answers similar to what we said before. Idi is the name of a Chacham. Idi is a is the name of the Chacham. And he says, Mosera Loikani. And Mosera Loikani, Mesira does not work. What do you mean Mesira doesn't work? Mesira does work. Itmar Nami, Omar Rabbi Chelbo, Rabbi Chelbo supports what we said and explains what we say. Omar of Huna, Mosera Michaver Loikono, here's what I told you. And Mosera or Mesira from one person to the other, you want to make a legal purchase from Reuven to you, then Mesira does the trick one way or the other, either he has to pass it to you or you hold it with his permission, with his consent, he's smiling a big smile. But if it's a found object, the lost object in the Goisha place, you don't have to do Shavu Zaveda. It's Hefker. He has no children. 
then lo koni, mesira then is not koina, because the definition of mesira is being given over from one rushus, one domain, one authority to the other. My loshon mosera, because listen to the word, says the Gemara. What does mosera mean? What, what, what's loshon? What's the grammatical uh, uh, notation over here? Omarove, idi asberali, idi explained it to me. A person moser, what's moser? Given over, handing over one thing to the, to the other. If it's from his friend, he's going there because really the friend gave it over. Or at least the friend was happy that I'm holding it. So it's a virtual mesira. I take it and he's like, oh yeah, very nice. Yeah, it cost only $2 million. Very good. Everyone's happy, but there is some kind of physical or virtual mesira. Nobody is there to do the Mesira, so you should be koiner, right? You take it off the street, off the, off the sidewalk, there's no Mesira for, to be koiner, only Mashiach works, not Mesira. And therefore what? And therefore, what does it have to do with anything? Let's retract what you've said. The fact that the person holds onto the saddle, onto the reins, doesn't faze me, doesn't do anything to me. It's, we're talking about Metziah. Ah, if so, once we remove that factor, we can go back to the person who's sitting in the Karon, the person sitting in the chariot, the person sitting in that riding box, whatever that is, completely passive and not holding the reins, not holding anything. According to Shmuel, Shmuel said that Chachomim, the majority of Chachomim, are the ones who said he's not over in Avera, which means his riding is not called halachically riding. Is not clearly relating to the animal, which means kinin is not going to work. Which means, yes, according to Shmuel, now we found, oh, we found out what we have to find out. And that is what? We know that out of the two statements Shmuel made, clearly Shmuel is the one who holds that, that rechiva sitting on the animal and not really causing it to move is not doing the trick, is not a kinin at all. While Meshich obviously is a kinin. And of course, the question that's burning over here is, the Mishnah seemed to be saying otherwise. The Mishnah says, no. The Mishnah says two people come to base, and one is sitting like a yacht, and the other one is pulling it, and yet the Chachamim strike, their, they stroke the beard. They don't strike it, I hope, yeah? They stroke the beard and say, hum, 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 okay, half, half, make a Shmuel. What do you mean? According to Shmuel, we tell the guy who's writing, you make a great photo, <laughs> but you're not going it. So according to Shmuel, what well, the Mishnah is wrong. Yeah, what's going on here, right? The Mishnah did give importance to the one writing. And that's going to be the next question of the Gemara. Okay? I want to even sharpen the question. I want to sharpen the question. I want to sharpen the question even more. I don't know if you remember we said yesterday at the end of Shir, because sometimes at the end of Shir I, I'm rushed a little bit. You remember that the, Mish, the Gemara at the end of yesterday's Shir, remember what we said yesterday's Shir? That was eons ago. What did we say yesterday? We tried to figure out from our Mishnah, we read through the Mishnah, the, the Gemara read through the Mishnah, trying to find where is there an allusion to the fact that if two people hold on to the same baguette together, right, the two sides of the baguette, then one has to have the other one in mind, right? They have to do teamwork, right? And we said, where do we have this case in the Mishnah? And then the one case before the end was our case of the behemah. And we said, what's the Hiddish in the case of a behemah? And we said, bad news for Shmuel, it's getting even worse. We said, we want it to be mechadish, that a person sitting on an animal, even though the animal is not moving because of him, is also called a Kenyan. Shmuel is now really in trouble. Not only the Mishnah is against Shmuel, it's vehemently against Shmuel. The Mishnah basically told me an entire extra case of Rochu Vimani to tell me that Rochu, and Rashi says that over there. Rashi says over there, Trichal Meymar, he says there that... Um, uh, Rashi, if you want to flip back to Chesamud Aleph, three lines before the bottom of the page, Rashi says, he's a person who sits passively on the horse. He's not manig with his feet. You know, when you want an animal to advance, what do you do? You, you, you kick it with your feet. You go, you take your feet backwards and you kick it in the stomach, in the back of the stomach. He didn't even do that. He's a passive guy. And the Mishnah wanted to be Well, you know, we have a new Kenyan. We're very... We're very uh, advanced. A new Kenyan called sitting on an animal. Yeah? That's so much against Shmuel. Oi, 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 oi. So now we're going to see what's going on. Yes, Baruch?
No, no, good. I'll just resume. I'll just uh, summarize yesterday again. So then we said that no, the case of an animal, they fight with each other. They're not British, they're Israeli. The rider says it's all mine, and the puller said it's all mine. And then the Gemara concluded that the very, 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 very end of the Mishnah, when it says what? Shne moidim, shne moidim. When we said they both admit, <clears throat> they both admit that the other one pulled it, what's a Kiddush? Uh, Magbia, what's a Kiddush? Then we said the Kiddush is that even though both of them picked it up together, it's not so simple. Because if I picked my half only for myself and not thinking of the other, then it's like making a hole in my cabin in the sink. Right? Everyone will lose. Right? But that we learn from the very, very, very end of the Mishnah, which take Mufurash, Shnei Moidim, they both admit, they're both friendly. Bashma, that the case before of the animal, is a fight, is a quarrel between the two of them. And why is it a quarrel? Because the one sitting on the horse is Docha Kinyan. So uh, we're burning with a quarrel. We have to get the answer. It's, it's getting already dangerous. Yeah, okay. Quick. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, the Mishnah does say it, which means what? That the one sitting is considered to be as machzik as much as the one pulling. And that's, is that good news for Shmuel? No, that's exactly the question. You're up to, very beautiful, excellent, super. You're up to listening to the answer. Very good, excellent. Yes. He doesn't get 40 lashes because he's coming from Mishnah Maya, he does. Right, right, okay. Yeah. And Shmuel supported Chachomim. I mean, said the Chachomim are the ones who said that he does not get the Lashim. Because Shmuel believes that sitting on the horse without doing anything, even though the horse does move, does move because of me, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing, and I'm not uh, moving with my feet. Stop, he's, maybe he's following another horse. You know why horses walk? Either because you make them walk or because they follow the other horse in front of them. So if he's not doing anything active, yes. And Chachomim says Shmuel is Potter, which means Shmuel believes that Rechiva alone is nothing, which begs us to... Gets us back to our question. Frag the Gemara, oh, finally, I don't think ever in our life we're so ready for a question. But I lost the place, of course. Okay. Mesivi. Line starts with the Likni. Mesivi. Frag the Gemara. Mesivi. Yeah. Question. <laughs> two people riding over an animal. Uh, two people ride on the animal, by the way. Oh, that's also a question. The Mishnah had two cases. One case is both of them ride on the animal, one behind the other. You know, like two, two teenagers on a, on a scooter, on a, on a motorbike, yeah? Yeah, so you have two people on the animal. What do we say? They split it. Wait a second, that's also not so good. Imagine yourself, the two people ride on the animal, and that riding is nothing. You know what I would do? I like horses. I want to buy one. You know what I do? I'll take it from them. I'll start pulling the horse. These guys are passive, you know? They're passive. It's not a Kenyan. <laughs> Why does the Mishnah say they do two people ride on it? They split it. It's not a Kenyan. It's as if they're off the saddle. On the saddle is the same thing. Just sharpening. Yes. Who cares? No, I'm cake. I'm making the case. Not me. The Rishonim say, yeah. If, so what? There are two people who don't have a Kenyan. What do you mean they're splitting it? Splitting also have to have a ride. I'm, I'm just exaggerating to show the Nathamina. And it's, it's, the Rishonim also wow. said. No, let's say they came to Beisdin. Now, I enter Beisdin because I want to sue my neighbor for the sewage. I don't know what. And I and let's say, imagine yourself a Biat al Nagid, and what? And I would say, I follow Shmuel, and I say, what? Those two people sit on the horse, that's nothing. I would pull the horse. <laughs> because really, sitting on the horse is nothing, says Shmuel. And I'm a Shmuel supporter. I have a t shirt. I love Shmuel. And what? And sitting on the horse is nothing. Why are they, why are they, why are they buying it? No. The sitting on the horse, nothing. Sitting on the horse is like uh, watching TV at home. And I would pull it. Yes, it's, it's mentioned by the Rishonim. The a third guy can come, which which again is a question on Shmuel. And what was the second case? One leading and one sitting, which again, for the 14th time, I'm saying, it's a question on Shmuel. Of course, the one leading should get the whole thing and not have half money. But the Gemara's question is more sophisticated than the way I present it. So now, very nice, Yosef reminded us of Rabbi Meir and Chachomim. According to Rabbi Meir, even Shmuel agrees that Rabbi Meir holds that sitting is what? Is, yes, is a Kenyan, right? Rabbi Meir believes that the one who sits passively, idly on the animal while the Shor and Chamor are plowing together is Chayev, which means according to Rabbi Meir, sitting is a Kenyan. So according to Rabbi Meir, it's not a Chiddush. Hashta Yosef Tani Rochov Mibai. According to Rabbi Meir, even one sitting in a carriage, sitting without holding, is koine, 
So Rochu, he's, so, so the Mishnah is redundant. Even if you want to tell me the Mishnah is going to be made, says Rashi, and the Mishnah would not be la'alocho, some Mishnah is not la'alocho. But that's still, it's redundant. It's not a Chiddush, right? Because if you want to tell me the person sitting idly, like in Kilayim, is considered as a real halachic rider, he's shaykh to the animal. So of, of, all the more so, the one holding the reins or holding onto something, as much as we said holding is nothing, but <coughs> it's definitely less of a Chiddush, right? It's less of a Chiddush to say that he's an owner. El alav Rabbanon. Must be what? It's Rabbanon who we're talking over here. Dishmami na rochuv kani. Question mark, question mark, question mark, exclamation mark. It's rochuv and he's koine, which means you were wrong. The way interpreted Shmuel was wrong. And must be that even though the one sitting is not koine, the one rochuv and holding onto the rain for some reason, I don't know why. You can ask a good question about Mesira, but Lamaisa, we see over here that rochuv is koine. And maybe it's not Mesira, maybe it's effectively sitting down, which may be a problem with Kilaim. But at the end of the day, we see that one sitting there without moving an inch is Koine. So you see that one way or another is not like Shmuel. Whichever way you move, Shmuel is not happy here. Answer Zigmara, da 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 Manik Beraglov, look at Rashi. Rashi says over here, Manik Beraglov says Rashi, for that's the Kanye be Meshicha. Meshicha does mean only to pull. You know how it's going to be Meshicha? Sheboyet about Beraglov, he kicks it with his feet. The animal walks because of his constant, you can go crazy from that, because of his what constant kicking and kicking until it moves and moves and moves. Kederech Roch Besusim as is the habit, as is the norm by horse riders, which means, let me introduce you the Gemara in Kiddushin and other places. I'll ask you a question. Does Meshicha only mean to physically pull, or can Meshicha be done by a person who calls the animal? We all know that people who, you know, they're very friendly towards animals and they know how to train the animals. Let's say a person wants to buy a dog. You know, that's not me, yeah? Somebody wants to buy a dog, and he's already acquainted with the dog, and the dog sits, and he goes like, Rexy, Rexy, come over here, and Rexy comes over here. Is that called Kinyan Mashiach? Yes, very good. It's actually the first example brought down in the Gemara Kiddushin. That's a lotion. A person who calls the animal, hey, hey, get, get over here. Come here, without touching, no hands, no hands, Wi-Fi. Yeah. And the animal comes because of his request. That's Mashiach. The shikha means any way I cause the animal to move. Aha. So the rider here is not some, uh, you know, guy who sits on the horse without knowing what to do, and he just sits like that. No. He's an active rider who's actually a moishech. He's a person who's what? Who's a manig. We have two moishchim, two manhigim. One of them is pulling with what? Pulling with a, with a leash on the, on, the, uh, on the neck. And the other one is also leading it by his feet. They both lead it together. And now that's why the both are really Moishech slash Manig. Nobody's passive over here. And that's why they get equal rights. Frag the Gemara, the obvious question. Kihochi, if so, Ainu Manig. So it's two Manigim. <laughs> what do you say, Roichivu Manig? It's Manigu Manig. He's Manig. He's leading it with a leash. And he's leading it with kicking it. And says the Gemara, Tregavni Manig. There are two types of Manig. I'm asking now a question, 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 question. Yeah, no, no, North Korea. What's a Kiddush? What's a Kiddush? Of course, two people are Moishech, right? Two people Moishech. Bishlama before we knew of Shmuel, there was a mega Kiddush that's sitting like a like a like a doll on the horse, like a China doll, is a Kenyan. But Shmuel did away with the Kiddush. Shmuel explains the Mishnah that the one riding is a very active professional rider who knows how to move it with the feet. So what's a Kiddush? And don't tell me that it's a Kiddush that moving the animal without Meshich as Meshich. It's a Mukursha Mishnah also, or Brisa. In, in Kiddushin, so what's a Kiddush, right? I know about Kenyan Meshich in all shapes and forms, so of course they both take it. And says, Gmar, no. Now the tema, I would have said, Rochuv Odif, the Amanig, the Tophis Bo, Kamash Malan. One would have said that the person who's actually, yeah, who is the one riding, may be Meshich plus. Well, the one only holding it by the thing, by the, by the rain, by the rope, leading him to the rope, is a regular Meshich. Says Rashi over here that uh, Ainu Mani, uh, that one second, Tafis means 
that not because he's holding on to onto the rain, that doesn't make a difference. The fact that he's manig, he's leading it, yeah, and he's also sitting on it, may have been considered a better Meshicha than the one who's off the animal and Meshicha, which means one would have said as follows. One would have said, I ah, know, I'm sorry, it's the Rosh. It's the Rosh, it's the Rosh, it's the Rosh, it's the Rosh, it's the Rosh. I want to see it in the Rosh again. I want to, I want to see this beautiful word again. Sorry. And basically it's like this. There are two people who are doing Meshicha. One of them is doing Meshicha. What kind of Meshicha? Regular. He's pulling the animal. The other one, what does he do? He is, oh. Okay, okay. Oh, Konush Nehem. Oh, Manik Betof is Yeah, very nice. It's a Rosh. One would say like this. One of them is doing regular classical Meshicha. He's pulling the rope. The other one is also doing Meshicha by moving it. And he's also sitting on it. Maybe the fact he sits on it is what? Is even better. Makes it what? Makes him more in power. Because he's sitting on the actual item. Plus, he's causing it to move. Well, the other guy is only causing it to move. So maybe the one riding has the upper hand. Maybe his Meshicha is five-star Meshicha. While the one pulling it like an Arab child is really a four-star Meshicha. Kamash Malan, they're equal. That's the Chiddush according to Shmuel. The Chiddush, so again, let's summarize. Let's summarize. Before today's Omud, we thought, what's the Chiddush of the Mishnah? To the one riding like a temple, like a tipish, not doing anything, not causing any movement, he is a Kenyan. That's what we thought before Shmuel. Yeah, and that's Enechna. That's a big Chiddush. Tam Shmuel and Shmuel breaks the sandcastle. Says Shmuel, no. Stam sitting like a yotzmach, like a dummy, won't get you anywhere. The only Kenyan available now on the cards is Meshicha. Why is the guy sitting in the horse coin as much as the one pulling? Because he's doing Meshicha. It's just a different form of Meshicha. Meshicha doesn't mean to pull. Meshicha means, next time Akiva Tachtel tells him Meshicha means to pull, you tell him no. Meshicha means to cause the movement, usually by pulling, yeah? If you cause the movement, such as by, you know, uh, it's called goading, you know, the, by kicking it in the stomach, and causing it to oh. move, what? Oh. Goad, G-O-A-D, I know, right, goading. He had to go, the animal is also Meshicha. What's the Chiddush? It is a Chiddush. Don't tell me that the one on the horse with Meshicha is more than the one of Meshicha off the horse. I don't care if you're located above the horse, inside the horse, or wherever in the horse. At the end of the day, as long as they have Meshicha, it's a Kenyan. Since both have Meshicha, equal rights, justice for all, and therefore the split it has. Questions are more than welcome because today is Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And may we may we see Mashiach coming soon riding on his donkey. Good day. Go to.